Okay, so a couple people, several people asked for um, a video on how I made my plaid, and I don't usually make tutorials, so we'll see how this goes. My daughter and I are sitting here painting plaids, so we're going to give it a whirl. So the first thing I do for my skinnies is, well, I've prepped, obviously, but I, um, I put tape on it as markers just to make sure I kind of space my stuff out evenly. So I have eight pieces on here spaced out. And I'm basically going to remove every other one and put a paint, um, sorry, a tape stripe. So we will start that. I already have one torn off here. Just kind of even it up. And then after I get a few of them on, then I'm going to go around and make sure they're all evened out and stuff. And so these tumblers aren't the exact same measurements at the top and the bottom. So it's never gonna be perfect, but you just want it like even enough that it looks good to the eye. It's never gonna actually be perfect. I just use masking tape for mine. It's cheap, it's quick. Uh, you can use whatever kind of tape you want. So as I'm taping it down, I'm just kind of looking at it and seeing if it looks kind of wonky and I can kind of adjust my tape line some. When I do my plaids, I say I do my plaids, but I literally just made my first one today, but I've made a bunch of them since. Um, but when I do my plaids, I like to do the bottom, my dark color, because I feel like it gets the least representation on the cup. So I like to keep that dark on the bottom. So what I'll do at the end, what I'll do at the end is I just take my tape and like fold it down like this because in the end I'm going to pull it off anyway and the whole thing's going to be dark. So here's my taped off lines and I'm pretty satisfied. They look fairly even. It's not going to be perfect if you measure it, but it works. So I can take my markers off. Those are done. And then I'm gonna do the opposite. I'm gonna do up the cup this way. So I usually can fit about eight pieces of tape up the cup. And I put them really close together, but not touching, because that's how many I know I can fit when they're spaced out like that. And I'm only using this as my guideline of where I'm gonna tape off. So again, it doesn't have to be perfect. It's just to save the place. So this is what I've got. This light is a tiny bit bright for right here. Let me turn it down a half a notch. So that's what I've got now. I'm gonna remove every other one. I leave open at the top on mine, um, and I'll remove every other one and tape that off. So I will start with this one. I like to put my tape right in the center of that space. I also like to start the edge of my tape in the middle of the up and down masking tape stripe because that's gonna make it easiest to pull off at the end. So I'm gonna go all the way around the cup and I'm just gonna look at each square here as I go and make sure that it looks relatively straightish. Like I said, it's never gonna be perfect, but if something looks really crooked, you wanna fix that. Then I tear off in the middle of my up and down piece and that's good. Then I go to the next one. So the taping off part is probably the most complicated, but still is not anything complicated. Just takes a few minutes. So again, I'm gonna go around, tape off my squares, make sure they look somewhat evenish. I didn't pull enough tape off on this piece and that's okay. Um, you just wanna be careful when you do line it up that you match up your edges really well. Cause you don't want to have wonky edges. We'll go to the next one. I save all these little pieces of tape for my guides for the next plaid. 
Obviously these strips on the cup as they get pulled off are pretty messy, but these little pieces are perfect for guides. You can use those over and over and over again. And it's not too late if you find that it's really wonky that you can just take it off and start again. There's no wrong way to do it. really hard for me to try to stay in camera because I don't make tutorials. Okay, so when I'm done, this is what I should have. Okay, and I don't care what the bottom looks like because I'm going to glitter it at the end and it's going to be all my solid black, um, my dark color. I'm going to do black on this one. So this one, I'm going to rearrange slightly, is going to be a black and blue buffalo plaid. So I'm going to use some, not really navy, but it's called marine. It's not really dark as navy. And then here's my mixture. And then this is a black that's really sparkly under epoxy. So we all know how black ones don't sparkle. What's this? Do you need navy? No, I don't need navy. I'm going to do this blue. Because I found it. Okay, thank you. I'm good. My 11-year-old is painting her first buffalo plaid right next to me. Stick your cup out, stick your cup out so it's in frame. She's doing red and black, she's killing it. Okay, thank you. <clears throat> so I like to use a big wide flat edged brush because it makes it real easy to like paint each square. You don't have to use a tiny little brush and try to get straight lines. This helps you make them as straight as possible. So I have a little medicine cup of Mod Podge, and then I have my glitters. And I'm gonna start with my darkest color in the open squares. I just need a piece of paper here for my glitter. This one has a lot of burnt orange on it from my last cup. Okay. So I'm gonna take a little Mod Podge and paint over these blue squares. I'm gonna do the whole line. The only thing I've done after I taped it is I made sure as I taped it off that all of my edges were completely laid flat. If you have um, bubbles and gaps, then obviously you're gonna get bleeding underneath. You don't want that. It's not the end of the world if you do get it, it's fixable, but um, why not avoid it if you can? So we're gonna do our black on our first squares. It's our blue, blue squares. Let's just black. And that'll be our first set. And we're gonna do the same for the next set. And this is probably the easiest part because you don't have to worry about making anything neat. You're just doing the squares that are already taped off for you. I need the black. I'm using the black, babe. You can have it in just a minute, okay? You doing know, your touch-ups? No, the bottom. Oh. And those two. Okay. So I'm trying to move somewhat quickly for you so this tutorial isn't six years long. Um, I feel like I go pretty fast with these regardless, so hopefully this doesn't take too, too long for you. The tape bubbled up a little there. You don't need a ton of glue, and I've seen a lot of people say that they um, do like two coats, and I, I don't do any of that jazz. I paint my cup, I base paint it, um, something that's pretty similar and I feel like I get good enough coverage that I don't really need to do multiple coats. I don't have that kind of patience in me. That just doesn't seem like something I would want to do. And I don't think that I have any reason to need a second coat, so I'm okay with skipping it. So 
So we're doing all the last squares of the solid black here. My daughter is waiting for the black. Okay. So this is what we've got so far. Okay. Not real pretty so far. It's okay. Here goes this. Welcome. Okay. So now we're going to move on to the next part. So we've got all of our black squares done. Now I'm gonna go in and I'm going to peel, if I can get a hold of my edges, I'm gonna peel all my horizontal tapes. I'm gonna do that right over my paper and catch all that black glitter that comes off. <clears throat> I've seen a lot of people say that these are so time consuming and tedious. And I feel like you sort of get in a rhythm and they go really quickly and I can knock them out pretty fast. I think this is my sixth one tonight. Um, I actually rather enjoy them. I don't know. It's kind of relaxing for me. Okay. So this is where we're at. We have our nice crisp lines for our black where we pulled the tape here. Now we have another blue section. And then we're going to take our mix so people say that it's a 50-50 mix, but you really can't just trust a 50-50 because if you have a very light color and a very dark color, the dark color is going to always try to overtake it. So I mix it until I'm really happy with it. I lay out my dark and I lay out my light, like I lay my bottles down, and then I mix until I'm satisfied with the color I get that's in the middle. So now what we're gonna do is take a little Mod Podge and we're gonna do these blue squares. So how I like to do it is I take my brush, not too much glue on it, because you'll make a mess if it's really loaded, but I push it straight down like that. Then I come up the other way and I push it straight up to make a nice edge, if you can see that. And then I just kind of swoop through the middle so that it's fully coated, okay? Then we take our 50-50 mix I sound weird because I keep my paintbrush in my mouth, I'm sorry. And then we've got that. So do it again. Trying to do this in frame, I'm sorry if you can't really see. And then just kind of swoop it across the middle to smooth it out and get the middle section. And when I'm not trying to show people how to do this, I usually do all four squares and then glitter at the end but I'm trying to show how I'm doing it too. Let's go ahead and do this one. And you just can kind of do the bottom sort of off the edge of the cup because we're gonna come back and glitter the bottom anyway. So I don't really care how tidy I make that right now. Knocked my glue over. So there's my 50-50 black and blue mix. Okay, we're gonna repeat that process for the other three columns that we have here. Right down into that, right up into there, smooth out the middle. We're gonna do a couple of them. The brush is a little dry there. Will you tell your brother to turn that down, please? Good God. I have a 16-year-old son who's doing his thing in his bedroom next door. God only knows what that is. Probably a video game. Okay, so we got all glue. We're gonna shimmy shake on all four of those. I don't do anything special to seal in between colors or anything like that. I also don't paint the Mod Podge on super thick either, okay? So there's two, we're halfway done with the mixture for this step anyway. We're gonna use the mix on the next step too. So just painting glue onto all the blue squares. 
and you'll notice that my Mod Podge isn't like super smooth. You don't have to be super, super delicate with it. If you want to, you can. I don't have the patience to paint for the next seven hours, making it perfect. I just want to get it on there before it dries. I don't have any huge ridges because you don't want to leave like big bumpy lines, of course. But we're going to be just fine the way we are. Okay, so we have one row left to do in our blue mix. I haven't made a blue one yet. Kind of excited. Careful, Zos. <laughs> Getting a little aggressive with it. I wish that I had that nice setup that people use for tutorials where it's like overhead and stuff, but I don't make them. So the best you can do here is I'm just going to lean my iPhone against my desktop wall. So this square isn't too hard to paint because you only have to do these lines against your black one nice and straight and the tape covers the rest. So you don't have to be super precise with it. You don't wanna get sloppy because then you will get sloppy edges. And if you do, it's okay. Um, especially if it's a little sloppy on your dark color. If you find that you got a little aggressive with it when you're done you can just come back and do a line of glue and put the dark color over it and kind of even it out okay so we have all of our black done and now we have our mixture in all of the squares from pulling our tape horizontally now we're going to pull our tape vertically so I have four rows of tape and I'm still using my mix so I don't need to clean my paper off or anything like that I actually really, really like making plaids, and I know some people find them super annoying, but I'm okay with it. So This step will be what probably is considered the hardest step, but it's totally doable too. So I'm going to get some glue on my brush, and I'm not going to get it super saturated because that's when you get sloppy lines. But <clears throat> we have the black, and then we have the mixture. And I know it's kind of hard to see because they're both dark, but we have the black, the 50 blue mix, the black, the 50 blue mix. So you never want a solid black and a solid blue to touch each other, okay? So I'm gonna put in between the solid black is gonna go the mixture. So we're still working with the mixture. So I'm gonna line it up here against my black on both sides. I'm gonna turn my light up just a little so I can see. I'm sorry if it blurs out the um, video too much. So I have both sides to keep that nice and tidy. And then I'm going to do a nice straight line across the top and pull it down. Oh, Caitlin, be careful. Got a cup down. So that's my square saturated. Now this part's the hard part because you don't really have a guideline on the other edge, but that's okay. So we're doing pretty good. It's a nice straight line, right? Okay. Then we're going to go to the next set of black squares and we're going to put the mixture in between that one. Okay, so I'm going to do my edges and I'm going to do a nice straight line across the top and a nice straight line as straight as I can across the bottom and then just do a little swoop up to fill in the middle. So right now, there's kind of glitter stuck everywhere, but when I get done and I go to do the next step, I'll wipe out the excess glitter after this is dried a minute, because it dries super quick, you know Mod Podge does, and you'll get a nice clean square in the middle. You see how nice that looks? It's almost like it was taped off, but we're freehanding these last ones. Okay. So next black square, we're gonna skip the blue, 
go to the black and do the same thing. I got a little too much glue on this brush though. So I'm gonna do my edges and then I'm gonna kinda make a nice straight line across and a nice straight line across this way and sort of swoop up to fill in the middle of the square. Okay, and glitter it. And like I said, when I'm not making a video, I don't stop and glitter every square. I do all my glue squares in a row and then go back and shake my glitter, but I'm trying to stop in between to show you what I'm doing. As I said previously, I don't make tutorials, so I feel like it's much easier to teach people in person. So I tend to let people FaceTime me and I'll show them what I'm doing, but we're trying something different tonight. So we're like almost halfway done with this tumbler already, and it really hasn't been that bad, right? So if I stop and clean it up now so you can see it, this is what we're left with, okay? So we have our black squares and then our middle mixed blue, and then in these last ones, we're gonna put our lightest pure shade of blue. And so these are all kind of real dark colors, so there's not gonna be a ton of difference um, in them but it's gonna be enough that you can see it. It's not a real drastic color change like doing a you know, white and red or something though. So I'm gonna go ahead and paint a couple of squares at a time since we've kind of walked through it on the other ones. Remember, we're just doing our black ones right now. I know the dog's always covered in glitter. What do you want me to do? Okay, so I have my squares. We're gonna glitter them up. Dust it off. And on to the next set. Using this nice flat brush makes it really easy to get nice lines across it um, without having to Try to, I got a little kitty wampus there. Um, makes it real easy to get nice straight lines. If you're using a little tiny skinny brush, it's harder because, you know, your hand shakes a little when you're trying to do across that row. So it's just a little bit easier if you have a nice wide brush. I think that's a really good tip. I don't think some people think of that. And then they are annoyed trying to hand do it with a tiny brush. I'm out of my mixture, so I just need to refill my cup here. Okay. So two rows done, two left. And then the last one is the easiest one. That'll fly by. And then you've got a uh, plaid tumbler situation. So again, doing my edges and then just filling in my square. So um, the way that I find it easiest to keep it neat and tidy is I'm not putting very much on my brush at all. I know it looks wet up on the sides, but I really am only tipping, dipping I mean the very edge in the glue. And then I wipe a little bit off on the cup as I pull it up. You don't want a lot. That's when you get those thick globby lines. So I put my brush down. I don't know how easy you can see this, but I put my brush down and then I push it up against the line where the, uh, the glitter is that I'm going up against. That way I'm not globbing too much right there. So I'm gonna push down with it and then up to where I want it. I'll try to show you that again. So, Pushing up to it like this, pushing up to it like that, and that gets glue there without saturating it with a big old glob, because a big old glob is gonna make a big old ugly line. And we don't want that. So 
feels super awkward trying to record this because I'm not used to staying on camera and talking to myself the whole time. But we're almost done. So this will be our last row of mixture and then we're completely done with it. It's exciting. I really kind of love these and you don't have to go super fast with them. If you need a little longer to be more precise, that's fine. There's no rush. Um, you can take as long as you need to to get your lines straight. I taught my daughter how to make them tonight. And I told her, um, you know, if you see a problem, go ahead and stop and fix it. Because you don't want to throw everything off in the end. She got a little helter-skelter with her tape. She was trying to hurry and keep up with me. And uh, I told her, take the time to go ahead and fix it. Do it right. Because it's just going to make it harder to fix it in the end if your lines are all over the place. And if you have a slip of the brush, it's no big deal. You can go over that square and fix it. It is not the end of the world. But I'm not a fan of having to go back and do a second coat. So I try to get my stuff together the first time and do it well enough that I don't have to go back over it. Because I ain't about that life, y'all. That's tough to do just like everybody else. Okay, so I don't know how well you can really see because of my big bright light, but it's super pretty. Um, you can definitely see the delineation between the two colors, but it's going to get even better when we put our light one on, and that is what we are ready for now. So we're totally done with our 50-50 mix. Okay, now we're going to just do the lighter one. So, same thing. I'm going to dab my brush. I'm going to have just a tiny bit of glue, and I'm not going to have it super saturated. And I'm going to take my edge, and I'm going to put it in the square, and then I'm going to push it down to the edge of the glitter next to it on all four sides. So it's not taped off anymore, but it still kind of makes a guide for you. As long as you're, you know, careful not to push it onto the other glitter that's already laid it's going to be just fine it'll make a nice crisp square so I'm going to take my brush and I'm going to dab glue in all the four corners and then just swoop through the middle this is what we've got so far the trick is is you just don't want your brush too saturated that's going to mess you up every time you want it just enough that the glue stays wet enough to do your row If you have a globby brush, you're going to make a mess and you're going to be real frustrated with yourself. I tend to balance my pinky on the cup to help steady it. Okay, I've got all four glue squares. I'm going to do my light color on all four. And this is what you've got. Isn't that super pretty? I love it. The blue one's not my absolute favorite, but I do like it. I know blue is popular for Christmas, um, not Christmas, I'm sorry, for buffalo plaid. Black and blue, black and red, and black and white seem to be the most popular. So I'm just making this for the tutorial. So I thought, why not do a color I haven't done yet and get ahead on my Christmas game for later because um, I just made my first Buffalo one today and I do have a Tumblr page and I posted a sneak peek of it because honestly I, c I couldn't even wait till it was done and epoxied. Usually I never post my cups until they're completed but uh, I posted a sneak peek and got a ton of interest 
and I've already taken like five orders tonight for them. So uh, I'm just gonna go ahead and get ahead on my tumbler game for Christmas because I think it'll be a popular option. Last Christmas, I did a ton of cups, but no plaid. And I've wanted to make a plaid forever and they were kind of, I don't wanna say intimidating. I don't find myself super intimidated by a lot of stuff, but I did feel that they were maybe more time consuming than I wanted to commit to, but I'm glad to say that I was wrong. You can actually bang them out fairly quickly and they still look good. My daughter made a red and black one tonight and I'm not gonna lie, it did take her a while, but it looks so good. She is 11 and she made me a cup for Mother's Day and that was her first cup. And I was really impressed. So again, I'm just taking my brush and pushing it up to the glitter line on all four sides and filling in the middle and that's it. We're literally almost done with this cup. It's been about half an hour and that included taping it off. So this is a super quick and easy project. It makes it nice too because I don't know about you guys, but I charge extra for my specialty tumblers that take more time and energy and supplies. And I hate the idea of um, having to upcharge too much on stuff. So it's nice that you can still bang these out in a reasonable time frame and not have to price yourself like out of the market. This is our last row. And I really like it. I uh, kind of regret waiting so long to try plaids because they're super easy and can be done super quickly. They're kind of forgiving too, considering as long as you're not working with a big gloopy brush. And if you do get a little carried away, it's okay. Just paint over that square again, make a clean line. Last ones, we'll do the bottom, and that's a wrap. Okay, super cute, right? So now all we have left is the bottom, and so I don't know how well you can see on camera, but my last square starts just a little bit above the curve. So what I'm gonna do is get a little bit on my brush. Again, I don't wanna work with a big gloopy brush. And I'm gonna freehand a line around the bottom. So I'm basically gonna do like a nice edge all the way around where that color square would have changed. Cause I had a little gap there when I taped it off. So I'm gonna do like this all the way around the cup. I'm just eyeballing it, freehanding it. But again, my nice flat edged brush really helps me keep things nice and even. And you don't have to be perfectly precise because we're doing our nice dark color and it's over half the squares are the blended squares anyway. So it's gonna blend in really nicely. It's not gonna be like glaringly obvious if you were slightly off. It's not the end of the world, you guys. It's just not, it's just a cup. No one's gonna die. And then I'm gonna put the Mod Podge all over my bottom Fully coat that. Some people leave their bottoms blank. I don't really like that look. I like the finished full glitter effect. So that's what I do. I'm just gonna put my blue away real quick so I can use this paper because I'm doing my bottom in the darkest color, which is the black. And then it's done. So then I'm gonna shake it on the edges here and get where I had pulled it up around the lip just a little bit. 
I'm going to get those spots first. And then I'm gonna make sure my bottom gets really good. I'm gonna sprinkle it from all angles to make sure my coverage is really good. Let me just check it real quick because I can't see in the light. And that completes my tumbler. So there's my, let's see if I can change my light a little to make you see better. There's my black and blue. I feel like it's very hard to see. It's really pretty and you can definitely see the color variation, um, but I feel like it's really hard to tell uh, from my little light here. Let's turn it off completely and see if that helps. Oh, nope, not at all. Anyway, I'll take a picture. It looks really pretty. You can see there the different shades. Okay, happy flooding.